Do you believe the word day, when used by God during creation, refers to a 24-hour period? I do. I think the word day has to require a 24-hour period because of so many numerous examples in Scripture and in, uh, in science. There are 1,800 references to the word day in the Bible. All of them refer to a 24-hour day or the 12 hours of the day, where the Bible says, are there not 12 hours in the day? Uh, a couple examples of that, but nearly all of them are 24-hour days. Uh, some Bibles will have a footnote that says the days might be long periods of time, and they'll refer to Psalms chapter 90, where it says a thousand years is like yesterday, or 2 Peter 3, a day is as a thousand years. Well, neither one of those verses are talking about the creation. And both of them say thousand, not million or billion. This has nothing to do with the creation account. Plus, if you read through uh, uh, Genesis 1, you'll see God made the grass, the herbs, the trees on the third day. He made the sun on the fourth day. If those days are millions of years, then plants are going to die waiting for that sun to come up. Okay? Plus, the insects are made on day five. Now, the evolution theory, or the theistic evolution uh, position that uh, Mr. Callahan has taken, is totally inconsistent with the scripture, that's for sure, which is why people like him nearly always say, the Bible's a good book, but it has mistakes. No, I think the Bible's a great book without mistakes, and I think his theory has mistakes, okay? Uh, the, the, again, you go back to the symbiosis relationship. Certain, plant animals, certain animals require certain plants. Well, in this case, you've got the plants requiring the sun. The evolution theory has the sun created, uh, evolving, before the plants. The Bible has the plants created before the sun. There are many, many differences between the evolution theory and the creation theory and the Bible teaching. So, no, they're absolutely incompatible, and the, clearly the days had to be normal 24-hour days, about like we enjoy today, because... Uh, <coughs> Not only did the scriptures teach that clearly, Exodus 20, 11, in six days, the no death before sin issue, but also just the, the uh, symbiotic relationships would say it has to be very rapid creation in just a few days. Thank you. Um, as far as a day, obviously, no, I do not believe that things were created as described, and Dr. Hovind actually pointed out a number of the yes, inconsistencies in the creation story. And getting back to my point about uh, everyone agrees microevolution occurs, we see it right now, a matter of fact, in, in um, Africa where tuskless elephants are evolving. Certain genetics has caused certain elephants not to have tusks, so they're not shot. And we see it over and over in laboratory. Every, so everyone concedes that. Now, the way the young Earth creationists get around that is by saying, well, 6,000 years is such a short period of time, you're not going to see a drastic change. And even that, again, is subject to interpretation because there's a drastic change between a gray wolf and a pug dog. And there are certain insects that even have become new species. And so we do see quite a bit of change. However, again, the position is a lot's not going to happen in six years. And yes, you're not going to see an ape evolve into a man in 6,000 in 6, years. Now, I'm only briefly going to touch on the old Earth ID, ID for intelligent design position, just briefly, but the way they get around it uh, is by saying, well, yes, the Earth is old because of the overwhelming evidence, but then God stepped in at certain points. I prob you've probably heard the term, the God of the gaps, and then he helped things along, so to speak, and that way they get around macro evolution. But, no, it pretty much happens the way secular scientists say it does. It's just a slow... Uh, slow prog progress of evolution. Sometimes there are spurts. And getting back to the age, one of the key things is the age of the universe. And there are many arguments for and against. But one, uh, one I'd like to point out is that stars explode. And I'll probably try to revisit that because I'm about, about out of my time. But there's a certain amount of mass that will compress and ignite the center. And the soon, a, a star will take at the minimum one million years to blow up. Mr. Callahan, please stay there. You pointed out inconsistencies, and I believe that was what you started going over. Uh, one minute on each side uh, to explain the inconsistencies. Well, as, uh, as Dr. Hoven mentioned, there are sequences. There are sequences where the sun was created and then the stars were created, and there's not a clear... There's not a clear connection, and I go over the details of those actually in my book, which you can find. This is my uh, hard copy paperback, which I uh, wrote originally and, and was sold in uh, some famous science magazines like Discover and so forth. It's also completely online. A complete free version is on the line, and you can read that where I do go over 
the details of the inconsistencies. But I, I will get back since we meant, since I started on the sun thing, which is an in inconsistency in that the universe is old. If you take a certain amount of mass, um, it will compress and it will <laughs> it'll ignite. There's a certain amount of fuel which will then burn up. A star will explode in one million years. It's very well known. The most massive stars, it takes one million years. It's very straightforward. It's a very strong proof among many uh, that the universe is old. Dr. Hoven? Okay, I'm sure he was taught that at Berkeley, that you know, star dust can get together and form a star, but that just violates all the known laws of physics. When you try to squeeze dust together, you have problems with Boyle's gas law, as it's called. Gas and dust will not squeeze together without incredible pressure on it. Where's this energy coming from? Certainly not from the gravity within the dust itself. Nobody ever observes dust clouds get together and make solids. Plus, uh, the, uh, as it's squeezed together, the heat and pressure builds up and it drives it back apart. What he's teaching us is pure fantasy. There is no evidence for this whatsoever. Nobody's ever seen a star form. We see stars blow up all the time. That's all we observe. Last estimate are that there are 70 sextillion stars in the universe, which is 11 trillion per person. Uh, we never see one form. All we see is one blow up every 30 years or so. So no, that is, that is absolute uh, fairy tale stuff he's teaching there, that we see stars forming or that stars can form even from dust. Dust doesn't get together and form solids. Doesn't happen. Violates the laws of physics.